the hype cycle of artificial intelligence and people talking about it and just kind of like this disposable term got us really, I, I wouldn't say upset, but we were very focused on let's define what people mean when they say artificial intelligence. And by that, let's define what people mean when they say intelligence, because that's just a huge, it's, it's a big, I mean, it's really a philosophical question still in terms of what is intelligence. So we kind of went into the different ways we know how to measure it, like via problem solving tools or like crows fishing out things out of bottles of water with little hooks or um, language use is another indicator of intelligence. Um, and then different like scientists and philosophers through the years who have, you know, peeked into like cognitive science and things like that and cognitive philosophy and how can we ground some of the things we say and put a metric to it in terms of what do we mean when we say intelligence and what are the attributes that define intelligence? And so we kind of dived into like different aspects, like there's problem solving, there's communication, uh, there's like free thinking, there's like, um, like abstract thought is one. Um, so all those kind of build in together into this nebulous blob that we call intelligence and then throw it at like machine learning products. Let's break it down. We've yeah. seen three different terminologies uh, used. One is intelligence. And I know Turing, when he wrote his paper, he was like, oh, machines are going to be intelligent. And this is my definition of what makes something intelligent. The second is what we call artificial intelligence, and that's also sort of murky based on like the 1958 meetings and then the 1990 works and all of that. And the other is a new term that we've been hearing, which is basically machine intelligence that is sort of trying to create a more defined definition. What do you think is the difference between them and in the direction that we are going in wide neural networks or let's say through some other machine learning technique? Which intelligence do you think are we closer to? And what's the one intelligence that we absolutely will never be able to touch? Oh, that's a, I don't think I can say anything about never being able to touch because I think anybody involved with artificial intelligence or machine learning, like the constant goal is, you know, mimicry of human intelligence. And the question is like, when or how, and like, will I see it? So I can't say never in for, terms of some things. Um, also, every time I feel like someone says that, then like, like Dolly two comes out and they're like, oh, well now artists can't do anything. Um, like, <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, the first one was Alan Turing's definition of intelligence. And that was mostly, uh, if I remember right, it was kind of, if you can't tell the difference between something that's intelligent and this machine, then it is intelligence. So it's like this intelligence by kind of assumption or proxy and um that one i don't like because it's too philosophical and it's too much in the eye of the like observer um and human are like humans are not great observers of reality um uh, it also slides into like a little bit of solopism solipsism solipsism um where I don't, I don't believe anybody else on this planet is intelligent and you can't prove me wrong. So, and like, that's also the flip side of that observable intelligence, which is important. And I think that's an important characteristic, but it's also like you end up in the uncanny valley of like, it's, it seems intelligent until it gets a little bit too intelligent. And then you're like, oh, that's definitely a computer. It's too good at math. And then it slides up a little bit. It's like animation uncanny valley. Um, so it's a harder thing to like lock down just because there's all this other things going on with it. And it's, it's not focused on like a specific task or capability of the unit in question. It's more about the observer and like what they think seems intelligent. Um, and I, that one's weird. Um, then there's the, like the 1960s and 1990s and like the following AI winters, um, those are, I think those are like, I think those, and the weird thing is the one in the 60s, like the, that basically laid the groundwork for where we are now because all the, they just kind of theorized a bunch of techniques and eventually computers caught up so we could actually do it. Um, at the, I, that, that's, that's kind of, I don't know if it's kind of like the science of philosophy kind of thing or 
Like, it really, I think it's kind of more of a marketing thing because they're like, hey, we can do that. It's almost science fiction, but they grounded it on like biomimicry kind of things like neural networks and uh, genetic algorithms. And I think fuzzy logic came out of there. But basically, a lot of the concepts we use now and actually know can be used for machine learning came out of those ideas. Um, then there's also like knowledge-based systems. 